Hi there, motorhome owners. Today on your 2005 Workhorse W20 chassis motorhome, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install sumo springs on the rear axle. And this is what our sumo spring looks like when it's installed. You can see that the bracket is a custom fit for this chassis as it will line up with the factory Johns bumper attachment and it will connect right on there on one side. And on the other side, it actually lines up with factory holes that are already there present. So you don't have to do any drilling really with this setup to get these installed. It does have an optional hole in the event that the lower bolt is just unusable. Um, if there's some sort of accessory or something in the way, you can use that lower bolt here on the side and drill out this hole. Um, but that's only if this lower uh, hole is utilized. If that hole's still present without any components there, it just bolts right up. So it's really nice. A lot of the other Sumo Springs on um, well, like the F53 chassis and other motorhomes, they require a lot of drilling. This one's a lot easier to install. The main purpose of our Sumo Spring is to provide us with a cushion on each side. Our Sumo Spring is going to help dampen all the road impacts, giving us a smoother ride. And it also will compress up to 80%, giving us assistance throughout that compression that will help to support some of the weight on our motorhome. Now this doesn't increase the carrying capacity of your motorhome, it's just help, there to help assist your current suspension components in supporting that weight. By adding this in, you're gonna notice a pretty drastic difference in the way your motorhome handles. It's going to help to reduce sway because whenever your motorhome goes to lean to one side, it's gonna squish this one down and it doesn't wanna be squished down, it wants to stay in its normal resting position here. So it's gonna be pushing back, absorbing some of that uh, tilt that you're going to get. The other side, same way, it's going to stretch some because the motorhome is going to be tilting away and it wants to be in its resting position, so it's going to be pulling back as well. So it helps to reduce the amount of sway you get. That's really nice when you're in heavy crosswinds or a big semi passes by you. Um, you're not going to have so much throwing you around as you did before. It'll smooth out your ride some, so that way the cabinets with dishes and other things in it aren't going to be banging around and it'll hopefully save some of those dishes from, from breaking on you and it should extend the life of the rest of your suspension components because it's helping to absorb those impacts out on the road. Now before we begin our installation, we're gonna go ahead and hit the test course here just to see how the factory suspension feels. And then once we're done with our installation, we'll hit it once again to see how our Sumo Springs have made an improvement. Our course is gonna start with an uneven bump section, then a straight bump section, and then we're gonna hit our slalom section at the end. So now we're in our garage here, went ahead and pulled it in. The test course went okay. It did have quite a bit of sway on the uneven bump section and the even bumps when we hit those, it was a little bit harsher in the back. We had some bounce. Um, during the slalom section, it did have some rocking going on too. So I think once we get our Sumo Springs on here, we should really minimize the amount of sway that we had going on. It does really help to absorb that back and forth movement. So now to begin your installation, you're first gonna wanna park on level ground and use your leveling jacks to Raise the rear of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. Make sure you chalk your front wheels when doing this. We also want to place a jack stand underneath the frame to prevent any issue occurring with our leveling jacks because they are just hydraulic. So we want to have some actual physical solid piece holding the motorhome up. So now we're going to go ahead and remove our wheels. You are going to need some pretty heavy duty equipment for this. The wheels often torque upwards of 400 close to 500 foot-pounds, depending on the application here. Um, these ones are gonna be about 450 to 500. So just keep that in mind, you do need to have the right equipment. The first thing I wanna do to remove your wheel after we've got the vehicle up here is remove the center cap. And I just put some tape on our large pair of channel locks here so we can unscrew the center piece here. Once this unscrews, the whole center cap will slide off of there. It's a pretty long bolt. Then we'll need to remove the covers from the lug nuts. And we've sold these tools here at eTrailer. This is just a lug nut cap remover tool. It's got nice rubber pieces on it to prevent you from causing any scratches and abrasions on your lug nut covers. Just squeeze and pull all those off of there. And now if you've got a really big impact, you can zip these lug nuts off of here. If you don't have an impact and you're gonna to have to do all this by hand, then what you would wanna do before lifting your motor home up, like we've got it here, we've got it lifted. Before you lift it, if you're just gonna be doing it by hand, you're gonna to wanna to come in here and break each one of those loose by hand first. So take off your center cap and then those, 
and then use your big long ratchet, whatever you're going to use to take those off and just get a turn or two on each one. So that way when you get it up in the air, the wheel's not just spinning when you're trying to remove them. We've got an air impact here though, so we don't need to worry about that. We can just kind of zip them off of there. And this is a one inch impact, so keep that in mind. This is bigger than your half inch impact that most people would have at home. Once you've got your last lug nut removed, we can go ahead and pull the wheels off. We do sell wheel dollies um, here at E-Trail that you can put under there. They got like a little caddy wheel on them to pull them off. Me personally, I prefer just a big pry bar. Um, I'd find it easier than using the dollies and a pry bar is something you can use for a lot of other applications as well. If you put your pry bar underneath of it, just kind of lift up ever so slightly with your pry bar and it just slides right off of there. We'll do the same thing with our inner wheel. Now that we got our wheels out of the way, next thing we're going to remove is the jounce bumper located here. There's just a single bolt that runs through. The, it's a stud in the jounce bumper. We'll take the nut off with a 15 millimeter socket. You may have to hold the bumper to keep it from spinning as you're removing the nut. And it may be loose enough by hand. No, nope, we're going to have to use the wrench probably. Sometimes it does get kind of loose in there. We did put some penetrating oil on it to make it come off a little bit easier because this is an older motor home, so it had a bit of corrosion on it. All right. Once you get the Johns bumper out, just set it aside. We are going to be reinstalling it. Next, we'll grab the bracket that's appropriate for this side. You'll know it's the appropriate side because the flange here is going to face towards you. The flat panel here is going to sit right underneath where the jounce bumper went. And the other side with the L bracket portion will go under the frame. There's a hole located in the frame here that's going to match up with a hole right here in the bracket. And there's also on the L there, there's a slotted hole that's going to line up with an existing hole in the frame. You may or may not have a bolt in that location. If you do, you'll want to make sure you remove that bolt. We're going to be replacing it with one that comes in the kit. So we can go ahead and get the bracket mounted up now. We're going to lift it up. Our jounce bumper is going to go through the hole in the bracket there. You might have to get this in place first because of the bolts that are sticking through the frame. Once you've got that slid through the bracket and then back through the factory hole, place the lock washer, the factory one back on there, and place the nut back on top there. And we're just going to kind of loosely install this for now. Now over on the other side here, where that hole that lines up with the frame is, we're going to use the thicker bolt that comes in our kit, place a flat washer on it. That'll line up with that hole. On the other side, we're going to place the flat washer, followed by a locking nut. We'll then take the skinnier bolt that comes in our kit. It also has a washer. This is a smaller inner diameter hole in the washer, so make sure you use the right washers there. This will slide up through the bottom, through the slotted hole, through the hole in the frame. And that is the place where you may or may not have a, an existing bolt there that you'll need to remove. And then on the other side of that, we're going to follow it up with a flat washer and a locking nut. Once we've got all the hardware loosely installed, we can go back and snug it down. So we'll use our 15 millimeter wrench or socket here for our jounce bumper. Now we'll do our other side bolt here. We're gonna use a three quarter inch socket or wrench for this one. You have to put your wrench on the inside to hold the nut. Then we'll switch to a 9 16th socket and wrench for the lower bolt. We got to do a little preparation on our bag now. So this has two sides. One will have four holes in it and another will just have one right in the middle. That's the side we're going to start on. This is our lower bracket here. The tapered edge should face away from the bag. And we'll take the tapered bolt, thread it down into the bag. And we're going to snug it up, but we don't want to snug it all the way down, enough to where we can still move it. So we'll loosen it up just a little bit there. 
And that's a pretty good place for it to be in where we can still adjust it as necessary. So now we need to set it in place and we're gonna use a paint stick to help us mark the bag so that we get it in the proper orientation because it does need to sit a specific way on your leaf spring stack. It's gonna sit roughly like this with the closer holes together. But let's go ahead and go over to the motor home. We'll kind of set it up there so we can line it up and make our marks. So just set it on top of your leaf spring there. I'm just gonna drop the bolts down in the top for now, just to help see where they line up with the holes. As you can see, these two holes that are closer together, those are the ones that we want it to line up with. So that looks like a pretty good place for it to line up with them right there. And then we're gonna center our lower bracket here over the leaf spring. And then once we've got those lined up, we're gonna take our marker now and mark the bottom of the bag on each side like that. So that way when we take it back out of here, we know where we wanna tighten this piece down on the bottom and make sure it's in that orientation right there. So we'll just pull those back out real quick, pull our bag back out, and then we'll finalize snugging up that lower bolt. So now we're just gonna try and hold all the pieces together and snug it on up. We want it to stay in this position where we marked it. And that's good. Once it's tight to where it can't move, that's right where we want it there. So now we'll head back over to the motorhome, set it in place, and get it attached on top to the holes that we kind of lined it up with there. So now with it sat back in position, we'll drop our bolt down on there, start it into the hole in the airbag, We'll start it in the other side here as well. And we're using, there's three sets of holes on top. We want the two that are gonna be closest to the front of the vehicle. We'll use our 9 16 wrench to snug them on down. In our lower bracket, we'll take the carriage bolts that it comes with. We'll drop those down now. We'll take the lower strap and put it in place. We're gonna put it in this position here. So go ahead and just slide that up over the bolts. Each bolt will get a washer followed by a lock nut. And we're just gonna get these started on here. We don't wanna fully tighten them down until we actually lower our motor home back down. This way they'll be in place for us. So once we get everything back on the ground, all we gotta do is crawl under here and then snug it up. Do the exact same procedures on the other side. And then once you've got that side installed, we're gonna reinstall our wheels just in the reverse order of how I removed them. The pry bar works really well. Um, now we're just gonna tighten them down because we have to get our motorhome back on the ground with that bag sitting on our suspension for that final tightening of those lower carriage bolts. So now we'll just snug these up down here using our 9 16th socket. And you want to go back and forth as you snug them up to make sure you snug them down evenly. And then you do the other side as well. So now we've got our Sumo Springs installed. We're going to hit our test course once again to see the difference. So after our test drive with the Sumos installed, it did smooth out our bumps when we went over the course a little bit. We still had some rocking and stuff going on, but it was a little bit more cushioned than what we had before. Um, but where I really noticed it was in the slalom section, rocking it back and forth, we didn't have nearly as much sway as we did before we had installed the Sumo Springs. And that completes our installation of Sumo Springs on the rear axle of our 2005 Workhorse W20 chassis motorhome.